the state of Victoria is currently undertaking a massive construction project called the Big Housing Build, which costs a staggering $5.3 billion. This project is so huge that the money spent could build a brand new international airport from the ground up. Engineers are working to deliver over 12,000 new homes across the state, using enough materials to fill a sports stadium many times over. We are talking about thousands of tons of steel and millions of bricks being moved to create high-tech neighborhoods. Every single home is designed to reach a seven-star energy rating, making them some of the most efficient buildings in the world. But how do you actually build thousands of houses on land that was once used to make explosives? This story really began in late 2020, during a time when the world was facing a major health crisis. The Victorian government looked at the numbers and realized they had a huge problem. More than 50,000 applications were sitting on a waiting list for social housing, meaning thousands of people did not have a safe place to call home. At the same time, the building industry needed more work to keep people employed. They decided to launch the big housing build as a giant engine to create 10,000 jobs every year for builders, truck drivers and engineers. This was not just about putting roofs over heads. It was a plan to modernize the entire social housing system, which had many old buildings from the 1950s that were no longer fit for people to live in. Some of these older sites, like the one in Flemington, had buildings that were over 60 years old and were falling apart. The engineers wanted to start fresh, creating high-quality homes that looked exactly like private apartments so that everyone in the community felt equal. What does it actually take to build a mega-project like this while making sure the homes stay warm in winter and cool in summer? The biggest technical secret is something called the Seven Star Energy Rating. In the past, most houses in Australia were only built to a six-star standard. A seven-star home is like a high-quality thermos that keeps your hot chocolate warm for hours. To achieve this, engineers focus on the skin of the building. They use double-glazed windows, which are two panes of glass with a tiny 12 mm gap of air trapped in the middle. This air acts as a shield to stop heat from moving through the glass. Inside the walls and the roof, builders install thick insulation bats. In these seven-star homes, they often use R6.0 insulation in the ceiling, which is about 250 mm thick, about as thick as a standard ruler. Orientation is another clever trick engineers use. They place the houses so that the biggest windows face the north. Because the sun is in the north during the day in Australia, those windows let in free heat from the sun in the winter. For the summer, they design eaves on the roof that are about 600 mm wide. These act like the brim of a baseball cap, blocking the hot summer sun, but letting the lower winter sun shine inside. These engineering details mean the homes use about 25% less energy than older houses. This saves residents about $450 every year on their power bills. Does building 12,000 homes mean you have to wait years for them to be finished? Not necessarily. Engineers are using a fast method called modular construction. Instead of building on a muddy site, they build the houses inside a giant factory. It is just like building with giant blocks. Each module is a room that is finished completely inside the factory, with the paint, the kitchen sink, and even the light switches already installed. Building inside a factory means the measurements are perfect down to the last millimeter, because there is no wind or rain to mess things up. In a project in Horsham, engineers used timber modules instead of steel, which stopped 475 tons of carbon from being released into the air. Moving these modules to the construction site is a massive engineering challenge. Some of these modules are five meters wide, which is as wide as two cars parked side by side. They are transported on giant trailers that can be up to 30 meters long. These are called oversize loads, and they need special pilot cars with flashing lights to guide them through traffic. When they arrive, a massive crane lifts them into the air and sets them on a foundation. Many of these homes use screw piles, 
which are giant metal screws drilled three to five meters into the ground to hold the house steady. The entire house can be put together in just one day once the modules arrive. Finding clean land in a busy city is another huge hurdle. Have you heard of the Toxic Hill in Cairn Lee? This site was once the Albion Explosives Factory, where people made TNT and gunpowder for decades. The dirt was full of dangerous chemicals like arsenic and lead. Engineers had to perform something called soil remediation to make it safe for families. They dressed in full white hazmat suits to dig up the contaminated soil. Sometimes they take the dirt away in covered trucks to a special cleaning facility. Other times they use bioremediation, where they use tiny bacteria to eat the toxins in the soil and turn them into safe dirt again. They even used a machine called a rock crusher to turn old rocks into gravel so they could reuse them on site, saving thousands of truck trips. They set up air monitors around the site to make sure no toxic dust blew into the neighbors' yards during the cleaning. Inside the homes, the engineering is designed to help everyone move around easily. This is called the Livable Housing Design Standard. Engineers make the doors 820 millimeters wide, so a wheelchair or a large stroller can fit through without bumping the sides. Hallways are at least 1,000 millimeters wide. Every house has a step-free entrance, meaning the floor is perfectly flat from the driveway right into the house. This even includes the showers, which have no hob or step to trip over. To make this work, engineers have to slope the bathroom floor very slightly toward the drain so water doesn't flood the room. They also put extra support inside the bathroom walls, which is like giving the wall a hidden skeleton. This makes the wall strong enough to hold heavy grab rails if someone needs them later in life. These mega builds are also saying goodbye to gas. Every new home is 100% electric. Instead of a gas heater, they use a machine called a heat pump. A heat pump works like a refrigerator in reverse. It takes heat from the outside air, even when it is cold, and moves it into a water tank to give you hot showers. This is four times more efficient than an old electric heater. In the kitchen, residents use induction cooktops. These don't use a flame, they use magnets. When you turn it on, copper coils under the glass create a magnetic field that makes the pan itself get hot while the glass surface stays cool to the touch. This boils a pot of water in about three minutes, which is twice as fast as a gas stove. Building thousands of these homes also involves smart neighborhood planning. In the Markham Avenue project in Ashburton, engineers built 178 homes across five buildings that are only three or four levels high. They used different colored bricks like Bowral Blue and Chillingham White to make the buildings fit in with the local trees and creek. They even hid the car parks in a semi-basement under the buildings so there is more room for green gardens and playgrounds on the surface. These sites are tenure blind, which is a fancy way of saying you can't tell the difference between a social housing unit and an expensive private apartment from the outside. The project is moving fast, but it still faces some big hurdles and questions. Although the original budget was $5.3 billion, the total investment has now grown to over $8 billion as the government adds more housing programs. Homes Victoria is managed as a giant partnership where they lease the land to groups for 40 years. After 40 years, the land and the buildings all go back to the public for free. The Auditor General reported that about 80% of the homes are being finished on time, but the other 20% might be delayed by up to three years. There is also a renewal gap of about $275 million a year needed just to fix older public houses that are falling apart. Some critics have pointed out that while the government is building thousands of new units, they are also tearing down old towers, which caused the total number of public homes to actually decrease by 446 in late 2023. Despite these challenges, 
the project has already completed over 12,000 homes as of late 2025 and is planning to keep building all the way until 2051. If you enjoyed learning about the massive engineering behind Victoria's big housing build, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the Ultimate Mega Builds channel for more incredible projects from around the globe. Do you think every new home should be built with these seven-star energy rules? Let us know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a new update.